Hi, my name is Keno Thomas, and today we're going to talk about atmospheric composition and airflow circulation. As pilots, we need to have a good a, a working knowledge of what's going on with weather and how the atmosphere is composed, because we're flying through it, and we need to know that hot air rises, cold air falls, and all kinds of things of that nature. So, those are just a couple basics. Atmospheric uh, composition. If we trapped a block or a tube of air, a lot of people would just think, oh, well, all we're going to get is oxygen. Well, you're wrong. Oxygen only makes up 21% of the atmospheric composition. The major part of it is actually nitrogen. Nitrogen makes up 78%. Oxygen only makes up 21%. And carbon, argon, helium, and helium, neon, not helium, helium and neon, actually make up the one percent of what we call trace gases they're just trace that we find okay so it's not all oxygen when I it's not just HGO it's only actually not HGO oxygen it's only 21 percent oxygen now atmospheric circulation atmospheric circulation when we talk about that that is only the way that the, the air moves around the earth's surface okay so there's reasons why it's a little colder like or colder air at the polar regions and there's a reason why it's a little bit warmer at the equatorial regions and we're going to talk about that behind me I have a diagram and I'm just going to close in on it a little bit you know we always have my little busted little artwork <laughs> we have the sun here and the sun shining on the planet earth here's my planet earth we have a North Pole, we have a South Pole, and we have an Equator. Now, one thing I want to point out is we said it's hotter near the equatorial regions, and we're going to talk about why, and I'm just going to get a little, another marker here to do a little color coding here. Think about the sun rays, how they strike the Earth. Okay, now this is a direct line from the sun. Just think of this red as sun rays. That's a direct line from the sun. And guess the first point it meets? The equator, the equatorial region. And that's why it's a little bit warmer there. Most of the heat gets there and it's a closer route. So we don't lose as much heat during the radiation process or solar radiation process. The sun radiates heat towards the equator. Okay, now if we look at our polar regions, look what happens we're gonna have a longer distance to travel aren't we I mean wow we still haven't made it okay we're just now getting to the North Pole and respectively the same thing with the South Pole so our polar ice caps are pretty pretty cold places because the sun rays have a longer distance to travel from the Sun you see we have the shortest path is from the sun surf surface to the equator and that's where our equatorial regions are hotter now we talked about airflow separation what goes on with this airflow situation there is a process called convection most of you have convection ovens at home and the heat kind of rises spreads out and then it falls okay but we don't get as hot as an oven on the planet earth what I want to do is grab another marker and we are going to talk about convection, this process of convection. We have to think about what goes on with the airflow circulation. The equator or equatorial regions are the warmer parts. So we always say warmer air, it rises because the molecules spread apart so it's, it can rise easier. When it cools off air molecules they close in together they get tighter and the air mass gets kinda like heavier if you will or denser and then it falls so warmer air rises colder air falls so always keep that concept in mind let's t show our air flow now, this is green it's colder in the polar regions and what happens is the air actually falls towards the equator.
Okay? It's our first area of convection. So as we're falling, as this air is sliding down towards the equatorial regions, what happens is it's getting warmer. The molecules are starting to spread apart. Like we're compact, we're in the, in the polar regions, but then what happens is as we get closer and closer and closer to the equatorial regions, the molecules spread apart. And then we start rising, and I'm coming away from the camera. And then I get cold again, and I come back to you. So that is the process of convection. But just to give you a graphic picture of what happens, when we get to the equatorial regions, this air, it starts to rise. And then it cools off, and it falls back towards the polar regions. So you could see the process polar region, equatorial region rises, falls, and that's our pattern. Okay? This is called convection. While the air is moving, convection is happening. It's cold in the polar regions. It's warm in the equatorial regions. Rises, circles outwards, and then falls. Now, that's a primary concept that I want you to just lock into now because you have to keep in mind. You have to. You have to keep in mind. Now, if the Earth just stayed still, that would be that'd be real cool. But the Earth just doesn't stay still. It rotates on an axis. So imagine. <laughs> You got all this going on, this convective activity. The earth is spinning around while we have unequal heating. We have major heating going on in the equatorial regions. And the north and south pole polar regions, it's cooler. See, weather is constantly in motion. Energy is always moving around. And that's why when you look at the weather patterns, when you look, uh, I don't know, you go online or you kind of look at weather or motion, it's always moving, it never stops. Something is always replacing something or overtaking something. Um, later on we'll talk about warm fronts and cold fronts. And that gives you a better idea of what's going on and you will graphically see what's going on when your weatherman is like, oh we have a warm front coming in or we have an included front or you know, we'll, we'll discuss that in detail. So today to recap we talked about the atmospheric composition, which is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and trace gases, carbon dioxide, argon, helium, and neon. And we talked about airflow um, circulation and convection and how it plays a part with our weather system. The sun sends sun rays all over the planet, but the higher heat, or the more heat is going to come in the equatorial regions because the sun rays have a shorter distance to travel. In the polar regions, where we have our ice caps, the sun rays have a long, longer, longer, longer path to get to the polar regions, and then this is why they are typically the colder areas than the equatorial regions. And we also showed how the air flow, air circulation, which is just movement about of air about the Earth's surface, or over the Earth's surface, how, and it starts out in the polar regions, comes down to the equatorial regions, it rises and then it kind of falls and then it just shows a, just convective, uh, a convection pattern. Now, just to recap again, what happens when this process is going on? Okay, we told you, it's rising and falling. I'm cold there now so I'm dense and I'm coming back to the surface which I'm walking closer to the camera. And then I move to the equatorial regions and then I warm up. My molecules spread apart and I can be easier displaced until I get back up to the polar regions. I get tense or dense again, my molecules close together. So the molecules are expanding, contracting, rising, and falling. So that's basically it. Atmospheric composition and airflow circulation. Thanks for your time and thanks for watching. Bye bye.